The memory fades away and you're now all standing once again inside of Alison's library and there is no sign of Michelle Fosniak or the Kingsbury run butcher, Edward Sweeney. Did we change the past? You changed the memory of the past. Your actions had no consequence whatsoever on the timeline. Yeah, this was a test, not a textual. What? Whoa, 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 you're telling me that we just did that and didn't change anything? You solved the case, you found who the real murderer was, and you can hear Alison, who's coming into the room, saying, I don't think you didn't change anything. I think that the whole experience has changed you, and yeah. this is what you know, we intended. We intended to have you realize what it's like to go back in history and to change it. And whatever you do in the great book, you will only be changing the records made by the Archons and the Divas. You won't be able to affect the timeline of the material world. But that does not mean that your actions won't matter. Okay. So you mean we can't destroy the world by stepping on a butterfly accidentally? I would say it's a good thing that you cannot. So what I told to Ness won't change anything. You will still die in a car accident with alcohol. Apollo says he already has died a long time ago. But if you had been in the great book, this action might have transformed into a verse about telling the truth and making people change their lives. You all did many actions that could have turned into light verses. But what I was trying to evaluate was whether or not you could make others realize their mistakes. The darkness in this memory wasn't just the murderer, it was also how the police were handling the situation. And by changing Elliot Ness's mind, you brought light into that memory. I suppose that's a good thing. I suppose so. You are ready, says Abs. I see you've all been through a lot, judging by the blood on your clothing. I hope you're all not too shaken by the entire experience. I died. It was interesting. I'm sorry you had to go through that. I'm not sure I'd qualify the experience as interesting, not after having experienced it so many times, but it's different for everybody, isn't it? Well, I'm not dead now, so interesting. <laughs> Before you go back into the material world, I'd like to talk to you about what we're going to do. Will you hear me out before you go? Of course. It is said that at the end of time, the gods will look up to the heavens to discover the history of humanity. They will see everything we did through the stars. When you are rewriting, you will be creating a new story for the gods to see. You will be putting on a performance of what good should do and what good should be. And if you play the part, maybe you will actually influence others to act good around you. You see, it is not a coincidence that verses are stories and spells. Each story is a spell that changes the mind of those who hear it and makes them aware of new worlds. Each person who hears it will be different for it. And if you spread a story of good deeds, you might influence others to also do good. I believe that if we light up the night sky, with our deeds, the people who look upon the stars will find more hope in them. As above, so below. I believe that together we can change the world. Remember that when you are up there acting your parts. Understand the story that you are telling. I suppose that's a good thing for me to remember. So what is the plan? Right now, we will have to choose a verse to rewrite and wait for the alignment, the convergence that will allow you to go up into the great book. And if Eric has decided to join us, he will need to drink his work in white in order to have a diva to take him to the great book. And before he goes, he will need to learn from Apollo how to use the Scorpio aura in order to hide the fact that he only has a diva from the Hermes and be able to stay among you in the material world in a safe way. And why only Diva? Why he cannot uh, connect with Archon also? Because his 
uncle did not prepare a work in black or ah. a work in red for him. Okay, okay. May I ask, if not rude, what's with the blood dripping from the books and the buckets of silver? I'm not sure exactly. It's linked to some painful memories. It, all of the memories are linked to times of fighting and times that I would rather forget. But I think something went wrong with those memories when Apollo was recreating the memory palace in, well, in here. Okay. I think the party will need a rest, so... Yeah. Oh, yes. And convergences that allow you to go into certain verses don't happen every day, so you will have some time before you need to go. And you will need to come back here to train your friend Eric to hide the fact that he will only have light come. Awesome. Mr. Eric, are you prepared for the things to come and accept the change? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to join us yet, but if the group goes into the first verse that they need to rewrite without you, you won't be able to help them if you haven't uh, taken in your working part. But we will never force you to do so. It is your choice. And it is perfectly understandable if you wish to stay a human without any supernatural to himself, just like my friend Kawa decided to do. Do I have to give an answer now? You don't. You just need to tell Stefan when you're ready. Just that I'm sure that I understand correctly. We are going back in memories to change them, but only for the gods, right? When you're going to go into the Great Book, it will be different from the memory because the verses will be the things that will be looked upon by the gods during the final judgment. Some aspects will be different. For example, time will flow at the same speed in the Great Book and in the real world, and you will not be inhabiting your own forms, your own bodies. On top of that, when you rewrite the verses, the magical powers associated with the story will also change. What, what do you mean, rewrite the verse? The verses are stories, and when you change the actions inside of them, you will change the powers that are associated with them. And you need to change them into actions of light, like you did in the memory. So the verse is what going to point the others. It's what they're saying when they activate their superpowers, right? Yes. Apollo says, if I might explain, I have never written a verse, but I know archons and divas who have. A verse is a complex thing. It exists in multiple states at the same time. A verse is simultaneously a phrase you can speak, a story in history, a supernatural effect, and a point in the night sky. And all four have a unique meaning. If you change the meaning, you change the phrase, the story, the point, and the power, because they are one. And that is no coincidence. Stories are spells. If you tell a story well, it can change the hearts of those who listen. It can teach lessons and create empathy or hate in those who believe it. Alison wants to create a new story, one that can change humanity and save it from the final judgment. Okay. So we're not so much rewriting history as writing a new story? The verses aren't actually accurate depictions of history because they are accounts of choices of light and darkness by the Archons and Divas as they remember it. And sometimes the Archons and Divas will make it more dramatic and will push together events in history that would have been farther apart. But you will be going through history as the gods intended to see it. So, does anyone have anywhere they want to go in history so we can get this kicked off? If anyone is specialized in the verse already, you are able to go in the verse when there is a convergence. Is there something that we can do in the present? Well, you need to get your diva. No, I mean, except of that, can we do something in the real world? It's very important that our actions in the real world stay secretive, because after all, you will be 
operating at the Gemini Observatory among Hermes. And Hermes do not want the history to be rewritten and they do not want light to be spread. So you will have to try to stay discreet, but there are things you can do in the material world, yes. For example, if you find secrets in the verses, you will be able to use the secrets to find treasures or information that we can use in the material world. Alison tells you, when you see Kaua, could you uh, talk to him about two things? First of all, I'd like to know a bit more about how his family is doing. It's been a really long time since I've been dead and I have no idea where his family is at right now. And also, she says this so that Eric doesn't hear this part. And in her deep, complicated voice, she whispers, I think Kaua might have tricked Eric into coming inside while you were using the telescope the first time so that he could stumble upon all of this. And But I'm not sure. Can you ask him to make sure? Because I know he's not a fool. And he doesn't usually make mistakes. We will ask him. Yeah, he seems so naive, but yeah. He seems a lot of things that he isn't yeah. always. Okay, so back to the real world now. All of you go through Stefan's memory palace and you open your eyes in the vault room and you get up. What are you going to do now? How do we know um, that we are not being manipulated by this Apollo? Well, I will guarantee for it. She was my mentor. I could tell you many movies where someone was the mentor and finally was the bad guy. No, I don't have that feeling about it. I know what you mean, but... How would you know if you're not serving the opposite cause and we're just screwing up everything and finally just serving uh, well, you have personal to have some... needs? You have to have some faith in it. So. Faith? Uh, you know, if we, you if we are serving the opposite cause, it's, it's not going to make anything worse. The way the night sky is at the moment, it's going to be difficult to make the darkness win even more. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, uh, by the way, you all win 12 experience points for this scenario. Yay! 12? Uh, yes, and that is the biggest amount I will ever give for a single scenario. <laughs> that's, that's the maximum you can give for a single scenario. Jonathan, I advise you to keep some experience points unspent because you need to learn... Too late? No, that's, uh, not, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> the Scorpio aura, which you will need to use half of your powers. What do you do after that? Do you have a debrief? Do you leave? Do you... Just a question. How many time passed? It's only been five hours. And how many in, days did we spend in the memory? Four or five, because you had a couple of days that were entirely dedicated to research. Can I make a correlation one day, one hour in the real life? Yeah, something like this. But there was also some time in Alison's memory palace before and after. It's uh, one hour per day inside of a memory. Okay. I don't remember. The female that runs the observatory... Is she a uh, Hermes or new Hermes? Can we avoid saying female? It's considered a bit disrespectful. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm not I'm, it's Professor Selena Murray, and I changed the image that I had for her because I found an image that fits my idea of her better. Nice. I was going to say that. <laughs> I was like, is my memory really that bad? <laughs> and she is a Hermes. Hermes. What's our story to her with the telescope and uh, stuff? How do we cover that we're going to see Apollo and New Hermes? The vault room has delicate equipment and you are the only ones who know how to operate it really well. And you have some control over the telescope every now and then so you can use it to go to the places you want. You don't need the telescope to go into the verses. And the reason there are vault doors is because the Gemini telescope has a silver coating on the lens that allows for observation that no other telescopes on Earth can do. So that's a real thing. And thanks to alchemy, you enchanted that silver to go 
into memory palaces, but also it allows the Gemini Observatory to observe the verses and the stories without anybody needing to go inside of them to see what's inside. So it's a telescope that is really unique. The only other one that is like it is inside of the other Gemini Observatory in Chile. Chile, and, yeah, I remember. And the cover story is you get all of the images observing the verses in this room, in the vault room, and nobody is allowed to open those doors except you because the Hermes don't want any civilians just walking in and be like, wow, this telescope is supposed to be watching the stars. Why is it showing me like a place? Yeah. And so because you are the ones who are using this equipment and who know how to use it in the observatory, you're the ones who are able to close those doors and use that room. Okay. I will then just ask Mr. Douglas to keep quiet about where he went and what he saw. Not even to the personnel of this observatory should he speak to, about the stuff he witnessed. Can we continue? Honestly, I don't want to finish in the Nazilium, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's always volcano, as Mr. Oliver said once. Exactly. <laughs> and remember, I can turn into a giant monster with a ribcage for a mouth. <laughs> hey, hey, can you do that? Show us the truth. <laughs> Your body wasn't actually affected by the whole experience because your body was still in the material world. So if you had that capacity, you lost it the moment you left the memory. Oh, Oliver's fully aware of that. He's just going to milk this being dead for all it's worth. <laughs> uh, what, what is the relation of Hermes and the living? Are they in kind of dispute? The living along with the devoured are two of the eight that are really weird and that nobody likes because they do things that are very chaotic and th they don't care about any of the other eights and they never cooperate. So you guys want to take a good night rest and we can meet in the morning to discuss how we should proceed. I think so. Definitely need some rest before anything. I'm gonna head back home myself. Take care. Eric, you head home the next morning you still have a drop so you still have investigations that are ongoing and some of your employees are wondering where you went yesterday especially stephanie and the next morning she asks was anything interesting happening in your investigation of the gemini observatory i'm pretty bad at lying so i have to figure out something <laughs> Yeah, I found a group of people that are not really pertinent. They're pretty much in their world and think weird stuff. So I've played their games for a day or two to just figure out if there was a way for me to get back my Uncle Mortune. But unfortunately, I cannot go against the will of a dead. So I um, think I'm going to just let down the investigations on that and... We're gonna move on to the next investigation. All right, well, there is a rich guy from the mainland who wants to use the opportunity of the vacation in Hawaii to see if his uh, wife is going to cheat on him with the bodybuilders at the beach. <laughs> I mean, like, more boring stuff. You want to go and take care of that today? Um, this is how Eric makes a living. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna take care of that as long as some personal research. Sinon, je vais pas faire français. J'ai deux choses que je veux faire. Le groupe à l'observatoire qui se sont séparés de l'autre groupe. Oui, il y a Neo Hermes. Oui, exact. Je veux faire des recherches là-dessus pour voir si je peux en apprendre sur le groupe principal, leur groupe qui s'est dissocié, puis les intentions des deux. Okay. Et moi, j'ai de documentation. I like how French people just don't care about H, letter H. Hermes. You never pronounce it. Je l'avais dit. Hermès. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
et je vois un projet de documentation pour la directrice de l'observatoire. Donc ça, Jonathan, note-le quelque part, tu vas obtenir les résultats le lendemain, parce que ça te prend une journée et demie entière de faire toutes ces recherches. D'accord. For the others, uh, in the middle of the lunch break, you see Selena Murray of the observatory comes to speak with you and because there are non-Hermes around, she says, all right, get every iron person out of here. We need to have a meeting with just the Hermes in the main observatory chamber in 10 minutes, okay? Get the tourists out, get the scientists out and hurry up. Tell the scientists they need to take a break. And she leaves. Fire alarm is what she's <laughs> saying? <laughs> Good thinking. How many Hermes are in here? There are 150 employees working at the Gemini Observatory at all times, and only 25 of them are Hermes and you guys. So yeah, just, just pass the message to all of them, then pull the fire alarm and tell the fire people it was a false alarm. Sounds like a plan. Anyone have any disagreements with it? That's a good plan. Okay. You ring the fire alarm, you get everyone out of there. And once this is done, you meet everyone in the main observatory chamber, which is now completely closed so that nobody can walk in on the meeting. And Selena says, all right, everyone, be on your best behaviors. We are having a visit from a very important person. And Hermes is coming in today and inspecting the facility and he is going to be giving out orders for something. He's going to be here in five... Oh, hello, sir. And she is not talking to anyone. Her eyes just go up and she says, I didn't expect you... Yes, yes, everyone is ready. All right. And she turns to a Hermes and she says, go to the kitchen and get marshmallows. And the Hermes just leaves. And all of you recognize that if she's actually speaking with someone, it's going to be that there is a Hermes inside of her memory palace right now, talking with her. When the Hermes comes back with a bag of marshmallows and gives it to Selena, there is a moment when Selena is holding the bag and there is light that starts to pour out of her body. And it's like regeneration, except that it changes her completely. She is still wearing the same clothing, but she now sprouts a long beard and looks like an old man. An old man whose image oh. we've seen in the past. You can either make a plus three erudition check if you have the history domain, or secret history check, or the eight check. All of them at plus three to know who he is. Oh, 20! Eh. No, you, you don't know who this person is. <laughs> Go back to school. <laughs> uh, as soon as he transforms, uh, he looks down in his hands with the brightest smile you've ever seen an old man have, and he starts putting marshmallows in his mouth. <laughs> and in between bites, he says, Well, well, well. We have quite a few Hermes working here, don't we? All right, you fools. I'm here to inspect this facility before we start Operation Crusade in three days. We're going to have an alignment soon that will allow us to observe the verses of Nicholas Flamel, whom we know is a Neo Hermes, but we aren't sure who his apprentices were. The Anubis who hunt down Neo Hermes have asked our permission to use the Gemini telescope to find out Flamel's apprentice and deduce who their apprentices were and so on to flush out all of those who could be in our midst today. He puts another marshmallow in his mouth. And we have generously accepted to help the Jackal in his task. All of you can see that the Jackal... She's uh, the leader, right? Uh, yeah. This person who is the leader of the Anubis in Hawaii, who also happens to be Oliver Hill's teacher, is standing to the side and nods. And Gamineau says, thanks to the technology of this telescope, we will be able to observe the verses unfold without having to go inside and disturb the story. How ironic, isn't it, 
Technology for this telescope was developed by a new Hermes to observe the memory palaces of elder Hermes like myself and overthrow us. Now we will, we will use it to find his comrades. Now, I'm telling you fools all of this because we need you to keep any non-Hermes out of the observatory and we need all hands on deck. You, old man! He says, pointing to Stefan, move ahead. <coughs> sir, yes, sir! <laughs> and, and he's pointing to you with a hand that is, that is holding three marshmallows. You're in charge of the vault room where the observation of the verses happened, right? Once Operation Crusade begins in three days, pick a few people to go in the vault with you and seal yourself inside until the verse is finished to ensure no iron person can find out our secrets. So yes, sir, no iron person. Any questions? No, sir. It must and be very... Ironic for him, especially with the telescope thing, because he invented that. <laughs> yeah. None of the Hermes present ask him any questions, so he just keeps eating marshmallows. Are any of you going to try to talk to him? Well, I'm a starstruck, so... Yeah, I am both, like, entranced and intimidated. Just yeah. the fact that he just waltzes in here and eats all of the marshmallows. <laughs> that... Ooh. Once it's clear that nobody's really asking any questions, he turns to the Hermes that went and got him marshmallows, and he says, Show me to the kitchen! And he heads off with the person. Hi everyone, and thank you for watching this video. If you want to be a part of this story, we are currently looking for more players and game masters to play new games in this setting and on this channel. You can also be a part of the story by having your face added to the cast of characters. I draw all of the images for this game, and you can commission me to make you into an NPC. If you like the style and you want a drawing like that of yourself, or if you want to contribute to the project, you can contact me through the links in the description. Finally, if you want to keep up with all of the adventures on this channel, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button so you can get a notification each time we upload the next episode of this story. And it would be very nice of you to like and share the video to help this channel grow. Have a nice day everyone.